Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, a quick and easy way to add reverb to your mix. Now, adding reverb to a mix isn't this new mind-boggling thing that has just come out. People have been doing it for ages and ages. Since the beginning of recorded music, or since the beginning of music, you would go to concert halls. And it had this natural reverb to them. And we add this now while we're doing our mixes to mimic the environment that we want our sounds in. There's pros and cons to putting reverb on tracks versus putting them on buses. So let's dive into the DAW and take a look at how to one, quickly add them, and two, some of those pros and cons. Here we are inside of our session, and we're really gonna be taking a look at our backing vocals right here. I don't have any other processing going on. I have a little master bus compression happening, but really it's like just kissing, so it's nothing to worry about. You can also see in this mix, I was messing around earlier using effects tracks, and that's not usually how I work. I prefer to use bus channels, and I prefer to use buses because it gives me the ability to also send. So maybe I'm tracking with someone, and they want to have reverb on their tracking microphone. I can put the reverb onto a bus and then send the copy of that reverb to their headphones. But if you're strictly mixing, maybe effects tracks will work for you. So let's go over how to quickly and easily add reverb to our backing vocal bus, which is right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the browser, and I could have done that by hitting F5. Then I want to go to my effects, and I'm going to use room reverb. Let's pull open a preset just to make things a little easier. I was messing around earlier, and parking garage is really fun for this little part that we're going to do. Now, mind you, these are very dry vocals we have right now. Let's take a quick listen, and you'll hear that there's nothing going on. Tonight. Tonight. So, very dry vocals. Let's change it up and bring in our parking garage preset on the room reverb stock plugin from Presonus. Now, like we said before, you could just drag this out and drop it onto any one of these tracks. I want all of these vocals to get the same effect. So instead of adding four instances of the parking garage preset on these four tracks, I put everything to this bus. Now, I could put the reverb on the bus as well in the inserts here. But maybe there's a part of the song where I want the lead vocal also going into a parking garage reverb. So do I then send the lead vocal to the backing vocal bus? Instead, why don't I just make a send to the bus itself and have just the reverb on that bus? Then I can send whatever I want to it. But look what happens here. When I'm hovering over the sends, it automatically wants to add an effect channel. So like I said before, I prefer to use buses. And an easy way to change it is just by pushing Option on your keyboard or Alt if you're on a PC. Now look at the dialog box. It shifted to add a bus channel on our bus. So we're sending from a bus to a bus, but we're using the reverb effect. If I let go of option, it goes back to an effect channel. See? There it goes. So let's release and we'll create the bus channel. And boom, here we go. We've got our plugin already set to parking garage as the preset. Now, because of my setup, I'm going to do a couple little changes. Here's the bus right here. I'm going to send it to my effects bus, which is then going out of my mix bus. It already has the minus six default for the send level going into the reverb. And now we're able to hit play and take a listen. Tonight. Tonight. And there you have it. Now you have the preset parking garage reverb across our backing vocals here. And then if I want, like I said before, my lead vocal to go, maybe I just want this track to go, I can create a new send, 
to room reverb, and now this vocal as well, and we'll jump to it real quick, we'll go to the same reverb. Yeah! This is why I choose to use buses for my time-based effects like reverb and delays. This way I can have multiple things going to the same type of effect at the same time, whether it be lead and backing vocals or anything else. This is just this sample right here. Another quick reason why I prefer to use sends to reverbs instead of on individual tracks is for this. Watch, I'm gonna grab these four backing vocals. I'm gonna copy this send from the bus to all the vocals. I've had them selected, I just dragged and dropped. I'm gonna turn off the send from the bus. Now here's one of the things that I like to do. You can see the panning on the tracks down here. So these two tracks are 50% left and right, and these tracks are 100% left and right. What I can do is grab the panner for the send and reverse it so that it creates a false sense of width in the send to the reverb. So every vocal that is going out from the left speaker is now gonna hit the right reverb and vice versa for the left and the right. So let's take a listen to that. No. So it creates a new dimension within that reverb. Again, another reason to use sends over multiple instances of the plugin on the tracks themselves. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in a comment and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.